All right. Well, guys, Fun Life Football. Today is predictions week seven. I know this NFL season is going really quick. All right. Roll the intro. All right. Welcome, guys, to Fun Life Football. I'm going to uh, say the first game, which is going to be Denver versus Cleveland. This was supposed to be a good matchup, and then Denver had to show that they're a fraud, and Cleveland got injured. So, yeah. And this one off to Josh. I'm going to have to go with Denver Broncos here. I think that the Cleveland Browns are way too angry riddled to keep this season alive. So give me the Denver Broncos here. Winning in not upsetting fashion, but enough of a fashion to make it know that it wasn't. So give me the Broncos here. Zach. I have to go Broncos. The only good thing on that Browns team is Miles Garrett. And, yeah, I don't see any other good spot about that team. Maybe Jarvis Landry and Greg Newsome, but, like, there's not a lot of things that you should like as a Browns fan right now. You guys had such a good team going into the season, and you still do have a good team. It's just all injured. So... Yeah, hopefully Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt, one of those two, come comes back soon. So then you actually have, like, a running game. So, yeah. Jack? I'm going to go Broncos as well. Though they've been very disappointing the last three weeks because they played bad competition. I think the Browns, they're really injured. It's pretty bad. They don't have running backs or quarterback or one of their wide receivers or their tight end, or their two tackles. Like, it's pretty much a disaster. So I think Denver's going to be able to do enough to get the win here. I wouldn't say easily. I think the Browns can keep it close if they have a good game. If they're good coached. But ultimately, I think Denver takes care of business here. Okay, our next game is the New York Jets versus the New England Patriots. Surprisingly, this is not a primetime game. And Jack's going to take this one up. I'm going to go Patriots here. The Jets are coming off the bye, so I think they're going to be able to be a little more competitive than they normally are against New England, but ultimately, New England, the record doesn't show, but they haven't looked awful. They've played up to competition. They did pretty well against Tom Brady when he came. They were hung in there with the Cowboys' electric offense for a bit. So while I think the Jets could have a good game plan, and hopefully they improve offensively coming out of a bye, I still think New England's an impressive team, and I think they're going to win this game here. What are your thoughts, Josh? I got to go with the New York Jets here because I just got to say two words. Houston Texans. They played down to their competition against Houston and then went, oh, shoot, we have to win this game. And at Davis Mills scored three touchdowns. And only because the Texans choked the game did they actually win. It was because of their defense and their special teams. Davis Mills was not the problem. He had a great game, and I do not take anything away from him there. So I gotta go with the New York Jets here. I think that Zach Wilson is gonna prove the Belichick theory of being good against rookie quarterbacks wrong and he will win. Zach? I got the Jets also. Having a bye week gives them more time to game plan around um, the Patriots and what they did against the Texans shows a lot of flaws that Zach Wilson can really do well with because if Davis Mills was showing off their flaws I believe that Zach Wilson is a better quarterback than Davis Mills so I think that Zach Wilson will show a lot of flaws in this Patriots defense and their offense firepower we've seen it with the Cowboys we've seen it against the they're, they've had offensive power, firepower it's just the game that they play is so conservative that I think that Jets with Salah are going to win with... It's going to be close, though. It's not going to be, like, one team's going to blow out someone else. So, yeah. All right, our next matchup is the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Baltimore Ravens. Hmm. I'm going to have Jack take this one. Okay. I'm going to go Ravens in a competitive matchup. Now, once... For once, this game is actually going to be competitive. Normally, it's Lamar Jackson's team rolling the Bengals. But the Bengals' defense is much improved. Their O-line is overperforming expectations. I ultimately think Joe Burrow's going to get the Bengals in a shootout here at the Ravens. 
But I think right now, the Ravens, since the Raiders incident, they found consistency, they found a rhythm, and I think the Lamar Chains train's going to keep coming here. Lamar Jackson's going to do just enough to give his team the win. What are your thoughts, Zach? I got Bengals. I think that the Bengals team is, like, really underrated. Their defense is doing really well. Their offense is Joe Burrow is connecting with Jamar Chase, the best rookie in this class right now. Um, everything is working out. Joe Mixon's working out. He's actually staying healthy for once. And if he gets injured, I'm sorry about that. But I think the Bengals are going to get get the win here. I have the Baltimore Ravens. Even though they haven't looked good in their past couple of matchups, I still think that they can be able to pull out a win, especially against these good playoff teams. So I got to go with Lamar and the Ravens winning this one. All right. Our next matchup is the Tennessee Titans versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Josh? I got to go with the... I got to say I got to go with the Kansas City Chiefs while I do believe that the Titans will put up a good fight. No, wait. No, scratch that. I'm going with the Titans here because I think that the Chiefs have not shown me enough that I can choose them against a team like the Titans because the Titans just beat the Bills, if you guys haven't heard. So I got to go with the Tennessee Titans. I think that they're going to keep this train rolling, especially with Derek. Henry going up against Kansas City's defense. So give me the Titans here. Jack. I'm also going to go Titans here. I think the Titans, they found their rhythm right now. Every once in a while, Derrick Henry gets this stretch of games and he just goes on a rampage. He just runs over everyone, and it's happening again right now. We've seen the Titans against a pretty good defense in the Bills. They took care of business there, barely, but they did it. A.J. Brown's finally starting to heat up. He had himself a nice game that I think he's going to hope to expand on against KC's weaker defense. And ultimately, Kansas City can beat up on the bad teams, but I don't know if they can keep up with the good teams. And I think ultimately, Tennessee's finally found the flow they've been missing since they lost to the Jets. And I think they're in business here. They're going to get a win. What are your thoughts, Zach? I... Did you choose Chiefs? I chose Titans. I also choose the Titans because um, I think this Titans offense is like really good. Their defense has a lot of questions to it, like who are their pass rushers, what's their secondary like. But other than that, I think this tight like this Titans team has a really solid offense that can keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs, especially Derrick Henry. Now, do I think that Patrick Mahomes will have a bad game? Yes, yes I do. Because I feel like he's going to try to make it way too much flashiness than make it, or, I don't know, just playing actual football than just making stuff look flashy. Because he doesn't, flash doesn't work anymore. So, yeah. Alright, our next matchup is the check, uh, Atlanta Falcons versus the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons. They're a team that I need to apologize to. I really thought they were going to be a disaster going in after they beat Philly, but they've been picking up some steam lately. The rise of Cordell Patterson has been very interesting to watch. They're getting Calvin Ridley. They're getting Russell Gage back. Kyle Pitts finally had a good game. And Miami, you just lost to the Jaguars, who are trying to go on the longest losing streak in NFL history. You don't deserve to be picked. Plus, you're coming off a London game. So you're having to go back to your home. Ultimately, Falcons with some rest and some good game planning. A nice game from Cordell Patterson should get the job done here. What are your thoughts, Josh? I gotta go with the Atlanta Falcons here because I don't trust the Dolphins. They're already rumored to be trading for Watson as of this Friday before the trade deadline, which will be great for the Texans bad for the Dolphins, but it really just shows what this poverty franchise is doing. Brian Flores was kind of a flash in the pan. Now looking back at it, he had one good season and now uh, he just can't seem to do anything. He can't even beat the Jacks. If you can't beat Urban Meyer, then what are you doing? 
So Tua's going to struggle, and it's just going to be a really bad game where I would say even if you're watching it, just don't watch the game. It's not going to be fun for either side. So give me the Atlanta Falcons winning here. Zach? The Falcons also. I think this Falcons offense is starting to find their stride, which is hard to say for some teams. But I think that uh, the Miami Dolphins, they really need someone to control that offense because Gaskins is one of the most inconsistent backs. Uh, Will Fuller's injured again. Um, Devontae Parker's injured. Um, what's his face? Um, the wide receiver that they drafted. What's his name? Waddle. Uh, Jalen Waddle. Uh, uh, he's been doing solid. Now, the defense was supposed to be the real thing, like the real big thing, and they have not shown up for the past seven weeks. So, I'm kind of getting worried about this Dolphins team and just being a one-year wonder, so I got to give it to the Falcons. So, yeah, that makes them 3-3. Three and three. Wow. All right, our next matchup is the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Vegas Raiders. Josh. I gotta go with Vegas here. They looked really good against the Broncos, and I think that they're gonna keep this momentum going by beating Philly. So, I just gotta say, give me Las Vegas here. Zach? I got the Eagles. I think the Eagles will, um, really show up, like, especially Devontae Smith. Um, this is a really weak secondary that they're going against, and Jalen Hurts is starting to assert himself as, like, a really good quarterback. So I think that um, this offense will start, like, really moving down that field with Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts doing most of it. So, yeah. Jack? I'm going to go Raiders here, but close. I think the Eagles... With playing on Thursday night, they're going to have the extra couple days to rest and game plan this week. I think they'll be able to stay in it, but I think ultimately the Raiders have finally found some momentum, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. Darren Waller, Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, they've all been pretty impressive. The O-line that should have been devastated held up pretty well. And ultimately, I think the Raiders are going to win in a shootout here. I think the Eagles, they're a better team than the record shows, and I think they're going to be able to play up to the Raiders, stay in the game, keep it close. But ultimately, I think the Raiders are going to come away with it here. Um, Our next matchup is the Arizona Cardinals versus the Houston Texans. If this game was any later in the season, I would have been going to this, which pisses me off. But, guys, I get to watch it. I get to watch my second NFL game for the Cardinals. Yay! All right, um, I have Arizona. They're, they're the best team in football. They're going to stay like that until some roadblock hits them, which might be the Packers next week. Um, But I feel like the Texans really don't have a shot against Arizona. Our defense is a top 10 unit. Our offense is the one of the best offenses in the league. The Texans can't keep up with the Cardinals, especially with uh the addition of Zach Ertz. Jack. I'm also going to go Cardinals here. They've passed every test as an NFL team. They're undefeated. They're the best team in football, or at least pretty close to it. And overall, the Houston, they're still struggling. Davis Mills or not, uh, hopefully Houston can get some offense game plan ready. But ultimately, I think the Cardinals, they're just really good. Their offense is just going to be too much for Houston to handle. And I don't think the Houston offense is going to do anything much less enough to handle the Cardinals' defense with Chandler Jones coming back from the COVID list. What are your thoughts, Josh? Uh, I think it's going to be a game that is played on Sunday. I don't think it's going to be close. But I'm hoping that Davis Mills has a good game. But I got to go with the Cardinals here to get their seventh win of the season. Yeah, seventh. So, give me the Arizona Cardinals here. Okay. Our next matchup is the Indianapolis Colts versus the San Francisco 49ers. Josh? Give me the Indianapolis Colts here. From the way that they demolished the Texans last week, they look like actual contenders. 
in the AFC South. So give me the Colts winning this one here. Jack? I'm also going to go Colts. And the main reason is Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor has awakened from his slumber, just like he did last year, and he's begun his rampage. Similar to Derrick Henry. Not as impressive, but still, he likes to go on a rampage around this time of the season. I think he's going to continue that. He's going to run all over the 49ers defense for the most part. Plus, the Colts defense, they're not great, but they're they're figuring it out over time, and I think they'll be able to confuse young Trey Lance here to give the Colts a win. What are your thoughts, Zach? I got to go with the Niners. They have to keep up with the really difficult NFC West and just the NFC in general with the Vikings having the seventh seed. Uh, uh, it's having the sixth seed. Rams having the fifth seed. I think that they need to keep up in this race. So, like, in with the Colts in this situation, they're both trying to keep up in these really competitive divisions that they're in, except the uh, AFC South. The Titans are kind of running away with it, but that's besides the point. Um, I think that the Niners really need this win to keep up in the playoffs. So, I feel like Trey Lance is really going to step up this week with Brennan Ayuk. Hopefully not having a good game. I'm sorry. I don't want him to. But Debo Samuel can go ahead. He's fine. I I hope he does well. But I feel like the Niners can get a win here. So, yeah. All right. Our next matchup is the New York Giants versus the Carolina Panthers. Jack? I'm going to go with the Panthers here. Well, the Panthers have been somewhat of a disaster the last three weeks since their impressive 3-0 start. The Giants have been equally, if not more, of a disaster with their not-so-impressive 0-3 start. Not to mention, the Giants were a bad team before the injuries, but now no Kenny Galladay, probably no Saquon Barkley, no Darius Slayton, no Kadarius Toney. Daniel Jones is losing his playmakers left and right, and ultimately, Carolina's due for a bounce-back game. They're in every single one of their games, and Darnold flashed a little bit at the end of the drive that led him down the field to tie the game. I think if they can see more of that Darnold than they did the first three quarters, they got a pretty good chance of winning, especially after the Rams steamrolled the Giants in MetLife. I expect the Carolina Panthers to get this win here and finally get back on track after a three-game slump. What are your thoughts, Josh? I got to go with Carolina here. I think that they will probably beat the Giants because the Giants are battered on every single thing in their football team. And I really think that Carolina is going to have their bounce back win here. Zach? I have to go Carolina also. They already have a better team than the Giants going into this matchup. Because the Giants, like Jack said, are injured. Just like the Browns, they have lost all of their playmakers on offense. And their defense has not been looking good. So a really bad spot especially for like being in this rebuild where they're about to have to pay Saquon Barkley which is not a great that's not really good for this Giants team um so and Daniel Jones is also not working out so they're probably gonna have to find a new quarterback this year uh probably should have traded up or at least tried to make a move for um Justin Fields because he was still on the board at the time so maybe they should have gone Justin Fields but who knows they could have gone a lot of stuff but yeah their rebuild's not looking good right now so yeah all right our next matchup is the Washington football team versus the Green Bay Packers um I'm gonna hand this one off to Jack I'm going to go Packers here. Washington, I'm disappointed, but not surprised. You were supposed to have a stout defense. They were supposed to get better. What happened? What happened? Devastated, I don't know. They're not really hurt by injuries. Not really, but they've just been so bad on defense. And Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams are coming to town looking to get to 6-1. and one. Maybe Heineke can produce some offense with Scary Terry and Antonio Gibson, but ultimately, there'll be no match for Aaron Rodgers, and the defense is probably going to be a total liability once again. What are your thoughts, Zach? I have the Packers. The Packers are looking like the second-best NFC team other than the Cardinals, and I think that 
uh, the Packers, the Cardinals and the Packers are really not focusing on their matchups this week. They're still focusing on them. But they're really looking for the matchup with each other next week, which is going to be really harsh and competitive. But I'll talk about that next week. Um, right now, it's going to be Packers just killing the football team. So, yeah. All right. Josh? I got to go with the Packers here. The Washington football team has slowly showed themselves as the shams of the NFL. And this is really sad from a team that had so much expectations on them at the beginning of the year. So I got to go with the Packers here. They look a lot better. And especially in those throwback uniforms, they're looking really good. So give me the Green Bay Packers here. All right, our next matchup is the L.A. Rams versus the Detroit Lions. Matthew Stafford's revenge game. I have the Rams winning. The Rams have only lost to the Cardinals, and they have kept this really good consistency. Even going against the Cardinals, they still look good. So I got to give it to the Rams. They're looking to really make a name for themselves this season, and they're going to probably make a deep run in the playoffs where they run into. Jack? The Rams. Outside of one game, they've been nearly perfect. They just decimated the Giants in midlife, left no, no trace of the Giants behind. And overall, Stafford's been impressive. And you know it's the Lions. He can pretend like he doesn't care, but he's going to want to beat his old team. And it all happens that his old team is the worst team in the league. Record-wise, maybe not team-wise, but record-wise, I think that Stafford should handle business here pretty easily. Give me the Rams. What are your thoughts, Josh? Give me the Los Angeles Rams here. I think that it will be close, but Detroit will find some way to lose the game at the end. So... Give me the L.A. Rams here. All right, our next matchup is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Chicago Bears. I'm going to say one thing before, and Nick Foles is starting. This is an automatic win, but Nagy's going to be stupid. So, yeah. Josh, take away. I got to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. From the way that Aaron Rodgers beat up on the Bears like he always does, I think this will be one of the same, just with a different team. So give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. Zach? Bucks. I think that the only way that uh, Bears can beat the Buccaneers is if they start Nick Foles. Why do I say that? Nick Foles is undefeated against Tom Brady in Chicago. They faced off last year. He beat them. So he is technically undefeated. So maybe they should start him. There's an option. Yeah. Jack? I'm going to have to go Bucks here. Now, the Bears, they're okay on defense. They're pretty good, but it's their offense that has problems. They can't seem to kickstart their offense for whatever reason. And while the Bucks secondary is weaker due to injuries, their pass rush is a okay. And the Bears O line being almost a disaster, that's going to lead to Justin Fields getting pressured and making mistakes, yada, yada, rookie cycle that we live in right now. I think the Bucks defense can get this done single-handedly, but I think Tom Brady and the Bucks offense is definitely going to help this week. Give me the Bucks. All right, we got our final matchup of this week, and it's the probably it looked like one of the best matchups. Drew Brees didn't announce for his retirement, or Russell Wilson did get injured, but we have the Saint and Michael Thomas getting injured, but we don't talk about him anymore. Um, we have the Saints and the Seahawks. This is going to be so easy to decide. It's the Saints. The Saints are coming off their bye week. The Seahawks don't have any type of offense or defense to deal with the thing that anything that Jameis throws at them. And Jameis is basically the new Patrick Mahomes. Now, don't quote me on that, but he's making throws like Patrick Mahomes would. The stupid ones, like the no-look passes and crap like that. And he doesn't even do it intentionally like Mahomes does. He just does it. Jack. I'm going to take the Saints here. Well, Saints, as of late, have been weirdly inconsistent. This could be a game where they completely implode. But the Seahawks, they're a downright disaster. 
Congratulations, you kept it competitive with the dead carcass of Big Ben, Bon Painkillers, and has zero arm. That's not really necessarily impressive. The Saints defense is going to be a little better, maybe on the same tier as the Steelers defense. I think they're similar, but ultimately it's going to be the other side of the ball. The Seahawks defense has not been good, not good at all. Jameis Winston loves the deep shots, and Jamal Adams will probably be there in coverage to probably take a ridiculous play that everyone gets to see on national television. The normal stuff, and ultimately, I just, I'm not going to pick Geno Smith to beat any team in the National Football League right now, much less the Saints, who have been pretty impressive, all things considered, with their team. Not to mention they're getting healthier as the time goes on. They're slowly getting some receivers off IR. Their Michael Thomas will be here in no time, hopefully. Not this week, but sooner than later. The Saints are getting healthier. The Seahawks are not healthy at all. Give me the Saints. What are your thoughts, Josh? Give me the Seattle Seahawks here. I got to choose something different from you guys, so I'm going to go with this matchup and take the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Um, that does it for our video today. If you liked it, what should they do, Josh? If you like what you saw, don't forget to punch that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to keep on following our videos because we have a lot of great stuff planned for this season. We also have some stuff that we are planning on revealing sooner or later in the off season. You know, maybe a couple interviews, maybe a couple things as the season rolls on that we have not revealed yet. Interviews, surprise guess surprise picks who knows we'll reveal that as it comes along thank you for watching every single week you are part of the frontline football family if you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so thank you for sticking around for this point and i have been josh from frontline football and like i say at the end of every single video jack hit the plugs as always don't forget to follow us on instagram and twitter Right there, I've mastered the direction on this screen. So be here. Next week, we got more predictions, maybe some news. There's some potential trades. Trade deadline is coming up. Don't forget potential people, Marcus May, Deshaun Watson, that kind of stuff. Keep an eye out for it. We'll be here next week for more predictions, and then trade deadline approaches. See you guys then.